We love Singapore Dimensions in our homeschool. We used it for fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, and I was planning on using it for seventh grade. I purchased the entire set for seventh grade. I was ready to go. And then I opened it up and started really looking through the teacher's manual. Today, I want to share with you a flip through of the Singapore Dimensions 7. It is so different than what you would have seen in earlier grades. Let's get started. Singapore Dimensions Math 7 is set up the same way that you would have seen earlier Dimensions programs in that you have an A and a B. So for each semester, you have the student textbook, the teaching notes and solutions, the workbook, and then the workbook solutions. So this is a little bit different right here than what you would have seen in say six, because in dimension six, you had one solutions manual for the entire year. This year, you will have two. We'll talk about these some more in just a little bit. So let's talk about the scope and sequence within each of the semesters. So for Dimensions Math 7a, you will be focusing on factors and multiples, real numbers, introduction to algebra, algebraic manipulation, simple equations in one variable, ratio, rate, and speed, percentages, and angles, triangles, and quadrilaterals. Within the B section, you will be focusing on number patterns, coordinates and linear graphs, inequalities, perimeters and areas of plane figures, volume and surface area of solids, proportions, data handling, probability of simple events, and probability of combined events. So that is your scope and sequence. When you look at the individual lessons, you will see that they're very similar to what you have seen in the past. So you start with basically why is this important? And then you have your lesson. You see that there's the example one and try it one, which is exactly what you would have seen in dimension six. Then that you have these exercises. Now, dimensions does not have a test book with it when you are at this level. If you need a test book, you might want to consider utilizing these review exercises as your quizzes, but you don't have to. It's truly up to you. And then you move on to the next lesson. So this is, again, what you would have seen in Dimension 6. It's laid out exactly the same way. You have the same colors. It's, it's just very similar. So this is something that there should be no surprises when you see this textbook. Again, you'll have your examples followed by your triads, and um, you even have the information from, for these review exercises, as well as you have your journaling at the end of each chapter, just like what you would have seen before. So let's see if we can get to the journaling right here. So here's your in a nutshell, your review, and here's your journaling. So the textbook is basically the same as what you would have seen before. So let's look at the workbook. So for your workbook, this does have something that's different than what you would have seen before. This is chapter one for your workbook. This is perforated and there it's not broken down by the sub chapters. And what I mean by that is if you look at what your scope and sequence is for um, 7a, you can see that you have your chapter one and then you have these subsections. So before what we would have seen is we would have been given specific pages or specific problems within the workbook for each of these subsections. And that is not the case. Now, this is chapter one and um, you can see factors and multiples and then chapter two is real numbers. So if we look at our workbook, chapter one, factors and multiples, you have these problems for it, and then you go into chapter two, real numbers. So it is not broken down with which problems you want to do for each of your subsections. But again, you can figure out which problems if you want to do that. I just wanted to point out that it was not broken down. Something they did with seven that they did not do with six, which I am extremely happy about. I like this. I think this was a great addition is if you look at your problems, your solutions key, you can see when you're in chapter two, 
you will have the answers here. So you can see here's your workbook question and you have your answers. When we were in six, they didn't have the questions in the solutions. It was purely the solutions. So you were going just kind of blindly as to the questions. You had to look them up in the individual workbook, but in seven, you don't have to do that. They have the questions and then they have the solutions. So you have the question that your student will see and then you have the solution. And I really like that change from six to seven. So now let's talk about the teaching notes and solutions because this is absolutely the biggest change of what you're going to see from six to seven. And first of all, you can just tell, here's my 6B notebook. You can tell there's a big difference. This one is spiral bound. It's a lot bigger. It's a lot thicker. So there's definitely, you can tell there's going to be a difference between these two. So for the teaching notes and solutions, this is really a teaching notes and solutions guide. It is not a teacher's guide. So here's your notes on teaching for chapter one. So for each of the different sections, it's going to give you a little bit of information on how they're recommending you teach it. And that is your teaching guide. There's no pages from the individual student um, textbook, you're not going to see these pages in this teaching manual. What you will just see is this, this for your teaching part of it. So this is notes on teaching and then they go to chapter two with your notes on teaching. Chapter three, notes on teaching. Notes on teaching. So once we get to the end of um, 7a, you will see that you have now seen the entire section of the notes on teaching for the first part of dimension seven. Then you get your fully worked solutions. Now this was a little bit confusing to me when I first looked at it because the way they have this set up, this is your first page on chapter one of factors and multiples. But if you look over here in your textbook, you can see here is your introduction. Then your first activity is here. The first activity is for factors and multiples. And you can see here's your example one try one. But the first thing they have in the teacher's guide is the um, class activity. So your class activity is here, right? So then you will see that here's your answers for your class activity. Then you have to go back. Now you can see you go back and you have your um, section one, try it. So that makes sense, right? So then you're at section one, try it. But then it goes through all of your try it's for the entire chapter. So anywhere there's a try it, you'd have to look up here for your try it's. Then it goes back to your exercises. In review, the first thing that you will be discussing for chapter one in your teacher's guide is the class. So this, the class activity. So this is on page, page number four. Then after you do the class activities, it will come back and it will give you these examples. So, and the, so this is on page two. The next thing you're going to do is do example two, which is on page five, and then you'll do example three, which is on page six, etc. Once it goes through all of the examples of the chapter, then it comes back and shows you all of the exercises. So then it comes back to two, three, which this is something that obviously you could get used to, but it just surprised me the way that it was laid up, that it does not go in chronological order with your textbook. It goes by the different sections. The other thing to really note in this teaching notes and solution is there is no set schedule for us. So for example, in dimension six, you would have had something that looks like this, which it gives you your objectives, the lesson objectives, how many class periods it takes, your textbook and workbook, your teacher's guide page, and then additional materials. You don't have this. This it does not exist in 
this teaching notes and solutions. So basically, you would need to make up your own flow for this course so that you could figure out what you wanted to do when and how many class periods you wanted to take for each of these sections or subsections within the textbook. Additionally, with Dimensions 6, you can see that they give us um, quite a bit of definitions, what you're wanting to get out of it, and uh, quite a bit of information on how to teach. Again, in your teaching notes and solutions, what you get for each section, each chapter, and each section is this much for real numbers. So you get two pages for up to 2.7. Um, for chapter three, you get this much, which where you would look at six, you were used to getting all of these pages to help with the teaching. 